Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. It's Friday, we have uh, one more uh, stream about Amiga OS. Uh, I'm glad I have you here. Uh, I'm George, you can find me as uh, Volcaro in various ad uh, different Amiga forums. Uh, how is everyone? Uh, hello Aris Amiga, welcome to the stream. Hello. Uh, how's everyone? How do you do? Uh, today um, we return again to Amiga OS 4 and my beloved uh, X5000 after the fiasco that happened uh, with uh, the previous stream and the um, incapability of um, streaming and uh, using the emulators on the same machine uh, now I'm I'm back on uh, the standard uh, uh, setup that I'm using for streaming uh, to be on the safe uh, side until I'm going to uh, find a way to repeat the, the previous one and uh, show you how you can uh, use Amiga OS 4 uh, on uh, a regular uh, PC. Hello Amikid, hello Zan, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, so for today, what we have today uh, is a little bit of various things. It's not going to be a specific topic in this uh, stream. Uh, we are going to see a, a fix that I found for um, an audio player, a beloved audio player that we have in Amiga. Um, and uh, we are going to see also Cinema 4D maybe later and we are also are going to discuss about um, Amidoc and how you can make it uh, look uh, nice on your, on your system I hope you can hear me well let me close the music and uh, yeah so we are going to see uh, I don't know if you remember one of the previous streams that I uh, had. I showed you various um, 68K uh, software, how they work on Amiga OS 4 and uh, if they are working well or not, or what are the, the problems that you might uh, have. Uh, one of the uh, applications that I uh, love to have uh, working is single player. Uh, if you remember from the stream, that stream that I I done, uh, Include Player works pretty well, but the timing on the on the sound is not well. Uh, it's not uh, the perfect one. And um, a few days ago, I found a fix which I would like to show you. First, before that, I would like to show you that in configuration there is timing. And there are three different um, uh, ways to set the timing for uh, the playback. Usually, if you use uh, on Amiga OS for the timer device, it works well sometimes, sometimes crashes the system like we have right now. Let me reboot. But the timer um, has the problem that uh, it's a little bit faster than uh, it should be. So, and uh, as soon as we reboot, uh, I will show you the fix that I found. The, uh, the other way to do it is uh, by using SIA. And, um, but also for the Amiga OS 4, this is crashing this, uh, the system as well. But there is uh, a patch that uh, was released back in 2018 that um, helps a lot with uh, CIA uh, timing and uh, CIA timing. And um, let me show you uh, what it is and how you can use it. Of course, this is something that you have to use on Amiga 1 uh, hardware. Uh, usually, if you uh, are using a, a classic Amiga, you don't need something like that. Okay. And um, because the, the hardware for this uh, timing is already there, so you don't have to patch the, the system or um, 
all, all because all the chips are there and the the timing for uh, things like that is uh, based on the hardware that you already have um, give a second to the system to boot Okay, things are getting better and better. It seems like the the, the streams that I'm doing are, uh, I don't know, uh, the last days are not going so well as they uh, as I expect them to be. Okay, uh, I would like to remind you also that uh, this. Um, Amiga One is running the latest uh, beta version of uh, OS 4 and uh, sometimes uh, there are things that are not working so well and uh, our job as uh, beta testers is to, to test all the latest things and uh, find uh, information and get information for the developers to, to fix those problems. Uh, Let's see if now it is going to be just right. I think so, yep. So if we go um, to music uh, folder that I have, there is a, a path that you can find on uh, OS 40 port and it is called SIA agent, which you just double click it. You don't see anything on uh, the, your screen. But if you go and open the exchange, you will see here that there is a, a program uh, already running. And uh, as soon as you have that uh, working, Eagle Player plays perfectly. Let me uh, put something that we all are familiar with. So right now the, the timing is selected as SIA timing. You don't listen and uh, you don't hear the sound, right? Okay, let me see, because the capture card freezed. Okay. I guess you have the sound right now. <laughs> Hello, TL Grooms, welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. We have some problems, some technical problems today with uh, the system, but uh, I hope that it is going to go well. So uh, I was showing that uh, there is a patch for uh, Amiga OS 4 that was released back in uh, 2018 and it is called CI Agent. I will leave the, the music playing at the back. Please tell me if you can hear me. And uh, yeah, you can find it at OS4 Depot. Here it is. It's a um, it's a patch for SIA uh, timing on uh, Amiga OS4, and that gives you the ability to to use uh, the right timing for um, uh, the Eagle player but also for other um, software that uh, needs that, uh, that fix and as I was showing this uh, can be found in exchange that is running when you run it you don't see any window or 
something going on but you can al always find it in exchange and uh, you can also um, put it on work with startup to always have it uh, working uh, at boot hello ppc603 welcome to the stream uh, glad you're here so uh, if you remember from uh, previous streams that I did about uh, Eagle Player, I, I said that okay, we have in Amigos 4 so many uh, players to to use for um, listening to mods and things like and uh, music, but I want the Eagle Player uh, to to work, and I was trying to find a good uh, solution for that. Hello, Javier, welcome to the stream. Uh, Javier says hello again. I'm out. So uh, when what's on offline? Okay, uh, keep the good work. Thank you. Thank you for passing by. Don't worry at all. Um, so uh, if you have an Amiga One and you want to have a Eagle Player uh, working fine, especially for the timing of the the, the songs. Uh, I, pr I propose you to use this uh, CI agent and it is going to work uh, beautifully um, there are some of the modules that uh, that come with the Eagle player that are not working well uh, don't worry Javier, no worry at all uh, basically because I, I guess they are created more for cyber graphics and not for Picasso or even not about uh, they are not uh, even um, uh, support RTG uh, graphics but I found that the FFT although it has some um, glitches graphic gl glitches which I don't know if they are visible uh, on the screen that you uh, have a look on that right now but they are working quite well for example this one and if you click again but uh, have in mind that these are not uh, optimized for Amiga OS 4 right and the, the graphics cards that we are using it's still uh, 68k but uh, you, ca you can use it pretty well on your system uh, some of them might crash or uh, seem to crash sometimes this effect crashes on my system but uh, you can uh, bypass it by uh, ignoring the errors uh, but it, it looks uh, quite well So uh, one more uh, application that uh, I love to use, uh, it's working fine on Amiga Store and that makes me uh, pretty happy. I don't know if you guys use uh, Eagle Player at all on your systems. Uh, she says uh, the blue light fire is very nice. Yes, it is. It is very nice to have it uh, working uh, in parallel with your music, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, what uh, other players are you uh, using usually on your systems? Even for um, listening to CD, uh, CD, uh, CD ROMs. I used in uh, my A500 Plus, says uh, PPC. Uh, I, I guess that's uh, a 500 that it's expanded, right? Hello Market5, welcome to the stream. Hello. BBC603 says with a pie storm. Wow. Wow. Uh, blazing fast, eh? <laughs> TL Groom says uh, I use single player on my classic machines. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, it, it is a uh, very good uh, player. Although uh, that I have. Um, some issues with some uh, XM files or S3M files. I'm not sure if uh, there are uh, plugins for uh, the Eagle Player 
or I need to change something in the configuration to make that uh, work. TL Groom says, have not tried it on uh, OS uh, 4.1. I will now. Yeah, remember that, uh, that patch? You can find it on OS 4 the bot and it's going to work well. As I said, some of the um, engines that uh, they come with uh, the player are not working or may crash your system. Uh, but uh, some others are working quite well, like the FFT analyzer. 600 MIPS in CC for wow, <laughs> that's uh, really fast. That's really fast. But PPC uh, 603, tell me something. Uh, okay, the MIPS and uh, the CC info is a good benchmark, which you can rely on uh, comparing different systems. But the overall feeling of the system might not uh, be uh, as fast as we think uh, uh, it is uh, because you wait for a window to open or something uh, how is your feeling with uh, your that system with the python i'm really interested on uh, the python and i might um, buy the version that is for the amica 1200 and i'm thinking that uh, seriously to to have it when it is released uh, so, what's your your overall experience? Is it uh, really fast? Is it uh, something that, in some situations, feels that it crawls, or something? Uh, okay, MU sixty eight, MU sixty eight emulation uh, PPC uses. Okay. Dear Groom says, I have a PyStorm on my uh, Amiga 1000 uh, and love it. Great, that's that's great. Yeah, of course it has some problems yet. It is quite uh, new, right? Yeah, uh, but I think they are moving uh, fast and uh, they are solving the issues uh, quite uh, quite fast with new releases. But as I said, I haven't uh, have uh, I don't have something like that uh, now, so I'm not uh, able to test it. Oh, uh, PPC six oh three says many games not working with WSD load. Okay, I understand. Understand. Uh, okay, let me close from the button, of course, uh, and let's move to. Um, Another topic. I had uh, one of the viewers of this stream and the videos on uh, uh, my YouTube channel uh, asked me to show how you can make the Amidoc look uh, the same way that I have it right now, and how you put uh, you can put it uh, up there uh, at the top uh, right corner of the screen and uh, add there some of these um, uh, widgets. So I would like to, to show you all the steps that you can do, especially on uh, having uh, sub docs like these ones that um, you can click on the next one and the previous one uh, close and uh, things like that. And how you can make it uh, look um, with that transparent background. PPC 603 says the feeling with graphics is very nice. It has uh, RTG, RTG support right now, right? The latest versions. I think it ha they implemented that, right? I think I saw a, a video that it, they, they have, you are able to have even uh, a, a bigger um, resolution than the 1920, uh, the 1080p uh, resolution, 1920 to 1080. I think you can go up uh, to almost 4K, which is uh, which is crazy. So uh, before we move on to show you how we can uh, create a doc like that, I will uh, take a backup of my env archive. Uh, this uh, folder, as we discussed in previous uh, streams, 
has uh, many of the configurations, especially in uh, the folder Sys, there are uh, configurations that have to do with uh, uh, all the uh, preferences of uh, the system and also uh, here you can see there is an XML file if we open into an editor uh, here for example this one you can see that it is an XML file that has all the information about uh, the Amidoc so because I'm going to uh, delete almost everything from the Amidoc I'm going to take uh, a backup of this folder and what I'm going to do is select it and click on uh, write Amiga and C which is going to create a copy of this folder you see that it is uh, pretty fast so uh, I prefer to go and get a backup of the whole uh, folder than go and get uh, file by file because it's going to be a slower uh, process uh, PPC 603 says 6080 to uh, 1050 that's the one you use okay okay that's uh, that's also a big uh, um, resolution and that's um, is that a 32 bit or a 24 Hello Preseda, welcome to the stream. Uh, Preseda says I am not interested in OS4, but I am here to say hello and express my support to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, don't worry because later we are going to discuss about uh, Cinema 4D. So uh, that's uh, 68K. Okay, and uh, a few minutes ago we discussed about Eagle Player. So that's 68k as well. So uh, stay tuned because we are we have 68k topics in, in the stream. SLD Snake says hi there. Welcome, SLD Snake. And Afin Mufa is here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Uh, PPC 603 says yeah, uh, 32 bit. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. I think that uh, the. Uh, the vampire doesn't get that resolution with a uh, 32 bit right maybe i'm wrong uh, so i got a backup of this um, nv archive uh, folder so to have all the configuration that i have right now sld snake says uh, interested in uh, morphos here <laughs> okay uh, I'm preparing uh, my system to start uh, the streams for Morphos maybe not on the next uh, stream because I have something else that I would like uh, maybe on the next stream uh, we are going to go back to the uh, Amiga 1200 and play a little bit with hardware I have something that I would like to show you there and uh, after that I'm thinking to start uh, the uh, streams with uh, Morphos so I'm preparing my system uh, to work on that especially on uh, how I'm going to, to use the output, the video output uh, and make it work with the uh, the capture card so SLT Snake, uh, stay tuned SLD Snake says, I think Vampire supports uh, 70 p or a little bit more, but it sweats. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I have the impression that uh, in uh, resolutions, uh, it can do resolution 1080p, the Vampire, the V4, the, the standalone, but it gives uh, 30 hertz. So you have some issues with uh, the support on the monitors but I might be wrong, they might uh, fix that or not uh, have that in mind so I go to this backup and I, I will click on my Amidoc edit and remove uh, try, let me see if I can uh, no ok I will go and delete everything starting from 
this here remove 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 okay and from the appearance okay save and then let me remove the uh, from here this let me remove it let me close let me quit the amidoc okay and this one if i'm not wrong okay here if i'm not wrong I'll, uh, we need also to remove this configuration from env um, so I'm going to open the filer and go to env and uh, search in sys I guess you know the, the filer, we have discussed about that uh, in previous streams it's a file manager that uses the reaction um, GUI and was created a few years ago so I removed from the env which is the uh, the place uh, in memory where all the information, all the the files from Envark are copied and used from. Okay, so I removed that Amidoc from there. So right now we don't have any configuration for Amidoc, and I will try to start it and see if it crashes. <laughs> uh, Amidoc is in commodities. Okay. So this one is the default, let's say, with no configuration Amidoc. Uh, let's start building it. First of all, edit here. You see that it's uh, empty. And uh, let's put some uh, applications in there. Uh, something, uh, for example, it's filer, drag and drop. It's in there. Uh, notepad okay uh, Amidoc doesn't have the um, uh, it has only one mode so if you drop a file uh, into an, an application it tries to open that with that application but if you drop the file at the, bo the border or at a, a space it adds this file, this application, into the Amidoc. Okay, so right now we have, let's say, these uh, three applications. And let's see how you can uh, make it uh, look better. Uh, if we edit it and we go to Appearance, uh, you can set a background um, for the drag bar, this one here, which you can use to move it. Uh, usually, I prefer to stack this uh, bar, um, this Amidoc, uh, at the bottom or sometimes at the, the right uh, uh, side of the, the workbench. Um, and you can also set um, for the icon area here, you can set a background, okay, a picture or a picture in transparency like that. So we have a transparency with the picture and you can set the amount of transparency through this uh, slider like that um, but I will show you how you can make it uh, with this background that I'm using uh, on my system so what you can do, you can go to uh, you can open your uh, eyebrows or any browser that you want and go to Amiga dash look dash uh, dot org it's an old um, website that I created a lot of years ago and uh, it needs a heavy update but it, it works pretty well so if you go uh, here you can find uh, different backdrops and icons and themes 
and there are skins for Amidoc and here you can find uh, if you click Amidoc you can find at the bottom uh, there are four different skins and I'm using the glass dog multicolor Amidoc skin uh, which if you click the image you can see how it looks okay so let's go and build it on our system uh, I have that um, downloaded and I usually things like that I prefer to install them inside a presets folder that uh, we have under uh, preferences so there is a folder presets I have uh, the Glassdoc uh, folder and here there are uh, a few uh, images let's see all the images with a preview uh, there are um, images really big so they can uh, uh, be used on huge uh, 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 screen resolutions sorry uh, and let's see how you can use them if you click edit on the Amidoc and go into the appearance here for the drag bar I will choose to uh, load the picture and go one uh, folder above is prefs presets okay glass dock and let's uh, choose something like uh, I don't know green as you can see here it already changed to a green uh, background let me do the same with the icon area parent uh, glass dock and I'm going to choose again green dock back green so as you can see for this for the drag bar I choose the road, uh, wrong uh, image which is dock back it should be the dock move green okay and you can see that the dock move has a right um, uh, curve at the top so we have to move the the move bar on the other side let's see what how we can do it uh, at the layout we have where is it? Icon alignment? No. Okay. Where is it? Ah, uh, I think it has to do, yeah. Orientation here, horizontal, horizontal, and horizontal drag bar right. So, here right now you see that we have a, a border which seems to uh, seems uh, to be the the right border right but we see also those uh, white um, oh my god what have i done ah okay let me do it that again it's one uh, of the applications that I have that changes the, the window size and if I click this um, shortcut uh, makes the dock uh, huge so let me do that again uh, really fast okay uh, move green and the icon area let me do uh, glass dock uh, back green again and on the layout drag bar right okay so we have that looking as we want and then you have to do uh, apply masking like that the reason that you need to do that is uh, the, the left uh, white uh, area uh, is used as a transparency color and uh, because of these uh, images are um, uh, PNG and have the alpha uh, uh, color set 
there is already some kind of transparency on the, the images. So by using apply masking, you enable the drag bar to use uh, this uh, configuration, uh, to use the transparency on the images. But we see that we have some bordering here. So uh, what we need to do is click here, talk is borderless. It looks much better. And then what I like to do is to uh, remove all the names from the uh, icons. And last, there is a, a pop-up uh, icon that you can uh, change. You see here that there is a small uh, button with an arrow and it doesn't look quite well with uh, the drag uh, with uh, the Amidoc. So what you need to do is to change that icon. You can set any uh, icon that you like, but it comes, there is a, a glass dock uh, icon for that and uh, this one, docky move button, okay, which is a, a really small icon, which is uh, hard to, to see and uh, make it look bad. Or you can use, let's try that, no, the previous one is much better, okay. And like that, we can have this uh, drag bar uh, where you, uh, we want. Uh, of course, you can scale the icons, right? And make it bigger or smaller. I use around uh, 80, something like that. Uh, but it is something that it's up to you what you are going to use. Someone might like to have it um, a bigger like that and then use the dock that um, auto hides it if we save it right now and you know that there is a dock uh, let me find it dock is one I, I think that's the one yeah it auto hides it and you can go above the bar and shows that again of course you have a small uh, bar there but uh, if you make it uh, to be at the bottom uh, right corner it looks uh, as it should to be honest I don't like it this idea and so I'm going to remove it. Okay, so we have the bar always um, visible, but the thing is that we can move it wherever we want. So to make it um, stick at the bottom, you have to go uh, here on placement, Le leave it uh, as normal and snap to uh, bottom center save and one more thing that I would uh, recommend you to do is uh, sorry if you click on the um, dock bar and click on the right uh, mouse button select the auto resize what that uh, does is that uh, whenever you uh, start an uh, application that creates its own uh, Amidoc uh, icons, uh, then uh, this uh, bar is going to increase its width so that it can uh, fit the new icon in there. Otherwise, you will see that uh, creating a second line and get a bigger on height, and that is not going to work uh, to look uh, that well. So uh, let's see right now what we can do and how we can create um, the icons that we have at the top uh, right corner. I have at the top right corner. Okay, you might uh, prefer to use them uh, in the middle of the screen or somewhere else. So uh, what you can do is go again into the uh, configuration of Amidoc 
and create a new doc. Let's uh, name it top doc. Okay, we have it already here. As you can see, you can't move it above uh, the the bar, the screen bar. So let me find. Uh, okay. If you select to have it at the top, again it has that problem that you can't move it above the um, screen bar. So what you need to do is to disable that checkbox here, respect screen title bar, okay, and that now you can move it uh, above the uh, screen title bar. And let's see what we can put there uh, I like to, to use the daytime uh, doggy that if I'm not wrong is available on OS 40 bot and you can find it there and download it so let me drag and drop it there okay as you can see maybe you can see let me move it uh, none and move it in the middle somewhere here it shows the time and the um, date and if you double click on that it shows a pop-up with the uh, calendar which is pretty awesome and uh, you can move it okay like that great if you want to move that um, window because it doesn't have a, a border to cut it and move it you can click the uh, left uh, amiga and the control if you have that, uh, these two keys uh, pressed, then with your mouse and your right, uh, your left uh, mouse button pressed, you can move any window wherever you want. You can grab it from any place, and you can move it. So, as you can see, it shows the date and the time, but it has that uh, one line of the. A title of the doggy which we don't want at all remove from the icon and names and also it has a background if I move that over here at the top you see that it, there is a background that doesn't look well on um, the above the the, the screen uh, bar so I'm going to make it uh, full transparent fully transparent fully transparent everything is transparent and then remove the borders now it looks much better at the top of the screen if you see above the um, the screen title bar it looks much better I always leave the pop-up pop size this button there because sometimes you want to move it or not or get into the configuration so I'm going to make the this button even more uh, even smaller and I'm going to move the uh, the drag bar on the right like that and put the bar at the top uh, right corner okay at this place um, at this position and then you can come uh, into the uh, snap tool and say locked so right now I can't move it at all so it's always going to uh, show itself up there um, if you want to separate things on that bar or on any Amidoc uh, bar you can use the separator doggy and drag and drop it here so you see it's added after the date and then I like to use uh, some uh, dockies that have to do with the graphics uh, memory or the, um, the CPU. Those dockies come into um, a package that is called uh, ZTools. This uh, package is, uh, let me uh, see where I have it. you can uh, buy this package on um, yeah on uh, the Ami store 
Um, and uh, you will find a lot of uh, applications in this uh, package as well as most of these uh, dockies that I'm using. Uh, if you go to Z, Z Tools and then click on Z Tools Installer, you see that there is a, an, a, a window that pops up and the applications that are coming with this package and the dockies that are coming with this package. CPU dock, graphics dock, RAM dock, these are all the docks that I'm using as well as the net dock and there is also this little brother which is uh, a nice docky that shows um, uh, photos from uh, web cameras which is uh, nice to have if you want um, so um, I'm going to use uh, the CPU here, the graphics docky, let me add it uh, with a drag and drop, the net dock which shows the activity on the network and also the RAM dock. Okay, let me fix a little bit the order of this which is in contents here you see all the, the items that I put there and then you can uh, move them and put them in the order that you like. Okay, save. One other doc that is pretty useful for me, uh, if you want to uh, type uh, with different layouts, for example, if you are bilingual and you want to to type for in my situation I want to type a text in English and in uh, uh, in Greek so there is a Kimap switcher which is a very nice uh, doggy you can uh, find it on OS4 Depot drag and drop it here and then with a, a right button a mouse button on that you have uh, the window sorry the settings here and you can set the primary uh, layout and the secondary one this is the primary the one that you have on your system and the secondary one that you want to use you click it here and then the hotkey that you are using to switch between these uh, two layouts or you can uh, click on the uh, icon at the top and select the one that you want and switch like that. Uh, key map switcher and uh, yeah, one, L, uh, one more docky that I like to use is the one that comes with the mixer. Mixer is uh, the application that is used to for the uh, audio card that you are using on your system. So uh, if you want to uh, change the volume of the uh, audio from this window that's fine but there is also a docky which is here inside the folder and you drag and drop that as well and you have the audio uh, you can change the audio from here and that's pretty much the way that you uh, can use and uh, you can uh, change the create that dock at the top uh, uh, right corner. I don't know, uh, is it useful for you to see all the time the, the CPU and the usage and the, the RAM, for example? Uh, what do you think about that? And for me, uh, I always uh, check the RAM because I'm trying to, even for the applications that I'm working, I'm trying to make it um, as optimized as possible and uh, when I was working on the editor that I am porting from uh, the Linux world um, I have seen that there was a leak of uh, graphics memory every time that you open the application uh, 10 megabytes uh, were leaking and that made me um, realize that there is a problem and try to find the, uh, the problem where it is and the bug and fix it and uh, this was 
help uh, I realize that because of this uh, doc app there which I have seen that uh, whenever I close the application the memory is not freed uh, so for me yeah it is uh, quite useful if you want to uh, see for example how much uh, RAM you are using right now or if you have uh, if you open your uh, browser and see how it is uh, dealing with the memory that's a very good uh, way to do it of course there are uh, other applications uh, on OS4 Depot uh, that you can have graphs about the CPU usage like the one we have here and uh, yeah you can use something like that uh, and there are other dockies uh, for the Amidoc to use as well but these are quite small and look uh, pretty well on uh, the bar at the top so it's my um, dockies of choice let's say hello Amiga Gamer welcome to the stream how are you doing? Um, so yeah that's how you can create these uh, items up there and have all these uh, notifications and whatever you need to, to, to use for example the uh, net docky shows you the IP of uh, your system in your local network and also if you exchange uh, data for example if I go here and in eyebrows and um, reload this page you will see the graphs automatically start and show that activity and hello my head welcome to the stream thank you for being here it's the standard um, things that you expect from this kind of uh, objects in my opinion and uh, they are quite um, uh, they are not uh, heavy for your system, so you don't have uh, any problem to use them all the time um, But now I would like to show you how you can create the sub -docs. if you go uh, into the configuration of uh, Amidoc You can create any sub -doc at any time. For example, you can click click here Sorry, uh, you can click here and you have the dock okay a new doc or you can uh, remove it and create uh, create an item oh sorry not like that you can go uh, into uh, utilities uh, dockies and there is where is it let me find it subdoc which is the default one that comes with uh, Amiga OS 4 okay you can uh, have the subdoc but the subdoc can go wherever you want this is one solution that you can use which is uh, quite well done uh, Amiga Gamer says I use a very nice doc on OS 3 called Workbench Doc by Thomas Rapp yeah uh, that's a very good alternative uh, Workbench doc and it's quite new, right? And I like that the, the, there is a version for uh, Workbench 1.3 if I'm not wrong which is very interesting it's, uh, Amica Gamer says it's like Amidoc but modern and currently maintained Yeah, exactly, yeah it, It's extraordinary to have that on uh, 1.3, right? Although that there were um, uh, docs for uh, Amiga OS 1.3 uh, but not uh, with uh, all these uh, new uh, modern features I guess uh, We see here how you can create uh, use the Amidocs that comes with Amiga OS 4 and make it a little bit uh, nicer to look and uh, more useful uh, So uh, there is the subdoc on uh, Amiga OS 4 that comes uh, with the system and you can create it and throw their uh, applications for example let me uh, throw the, the 
the yum icon okay and when you click it it is disappears and when you open art uh, appears and you can say, uh, leave it wherever you want you can even say that it will show itself at the left uh, bottom corner okay because it is an, a doc so uh, you can go and say the same things I want to have that placement always oh, not placement snap to bottom left for example always and you can have all your uh, sub docs uh, appear there to be honest for me I prefer to have sub docs to appear above the bar that I'm using uh, the Amidoc uh, at the bottom uh, like that uh, cancel cancel okay and there uh, you can find smart sub doc uh, su uh, smart sub doc uh, docky item uh, you can find it on uh, os for the pot there is smart sub doc and smart button let's see the first one and it complains about the volume let's make it an assignment here okay no parent here okay so as you can see right now it created a sub doc and that sub doc opens above uh, the bar so even if i move that bar let me show you uh, let me disable the bottom center let say none save if i move that bar and click the sub doc it always opens above the bar so you can have many of these sub docs um, the same way that you have the other sub docs that come with the uh, operating system uh, but they open always at the same uh, position even if you move the the bar and that's useful when you have the if you remember uh, at the start we said um, it is recommended the bar at the bottom or the main bar anyway it is recommended to be auto resize so if i start yum for example it creates a docky on the bar and if that uh, auto resize and you have the sub docs then uh, when you click the sub doc it opens above the icon that you use and that's quite useful as you see there is always a default icon here which you also you can change it let me show you how uh, if you go to um, here it says uh, internet and it has that icon but if I would like to uh, change it you can go left uh, uh, sorry right bu uh, mouse button on above this icon and change it from here and this default internet icon uh, doc icon uh, you can find them inside the env archive if we open that folder preferences uh, env archive and sys here you will see a lot of different icons uh, but there are a lot of icons or you can find a lot of icons that you can use uh, for doc if they have that uh, icon at the bottom uh, and you can use them to uh, show them at the doc for example this uh, death game doc so if I come uh, here and I drag and drop that here okay then it changes like that and I can put there uh, my uh, games for example and because you see here it gets the default uh, background I would like to change it to look uh, better so I will put it full transparent and remove the borders and also because I'm not going to move that I'm going to remove the drag bar so it comes it gets uh, smaller because these bars I'm not going to move them anywhere and um, what else i will make the icons a little bit smaller like 
83 okay save so I have here this uh, application and that's uh, pretty much what I would uh, like to show you about the uh, Amidoc and how you can uh, change uh, the way that it works um, of course you can uh, here we have the green uh, background but let me show you that in this uh, Glassdoc uh, package uh, you can uh, find different colors uh, for example the awesome uh, pink <laughs> and maybe uh, the blue which is also pretty nice or uh, my beloved black and let me put black on the move okay save and you have a nice uh, looking uh, uh, Amidoc bar at the at the bottom and you have the rest of the uh, the bar the the objects um, the docky bar at the bottom uh, at the top uh, right uh, corner and <coughs> that's the way you can uh, change the Amidoc to look better and have a more uh, being more useful for you I don't know uh, if you like to do such uh, changes on your systems um, of course it is for Amiga OS 4 but uh, things like that are working quite well on uh, OS 3 as well the uh, Amidoc that comes with uh, 3.9 uh, supports or not Dockies, who remembers? I think it doesn't support uh, Dockies, right? yeah I don't, I don't think it uh, supports Dockies but you might uh, uh, I don't know if the Workbench Dock from Thomas Rapp supports any kind of Dockies to have their for example the date and the time if you remember please tell me on the chat and before uh, the, the, let's move to the last uh, part of the, the stream uh, recently I I saw a video from a friend on YouTube who created one of uh, my beloved uh, joysticks. Uh, he created that. He created a 3D model, uh, and he used uh, Cinema 4D. And I thought that um, I haven't used uh, Cinema 4D a lot on Amiga OS 4, so I I thought to give it a try and let me show you uh, a little bit on how it is working so the Cinema 4D has uh, two main uh, applications the Cinema 4D which is the modeler here uh, like the modeler that you are using in Lightwave uh, but also you can place all the items in the, uh, the area that you have and also the Ray Tracer which is a simple uh, tool let me like that which uh, you can use to um, render your um, scenes and uh, then create your animations if you want let's click cancel and CineView is a, a tool like let's say MultiView that um, you can use to view uh, the renders uh, or the animations so I was uh, fighting a little bit with this uh, tool not to make it work because it is uh, quite friendly with the operating system and it works quite well with the Amiga OS 4 uh, but I was fighting with one thing that uh, I couldn't find the uh, solution and I, I would like to show you that here you probably already know about it so uh, but let me uh, show you something if uh, you load uh, a screen a scene and you try to uh, render it you say you see this uh, screen mode uh, is not available uh, but when I try to do that from the ray tracer it always worked just fine 
Uh, so I was struggling, struggling to find where this configuration can be done and how it should work better. And I found that, first of all, let me tell you that there is no manual available uh, in English. I haven't found anything anywhere uh, to download the manual in English. Uh, there are uh, three manuals, all in German. Uh, for version 2, 3 and 4, this is the version 4 and unfortunately I can't understand uh, German uh, so uh, I couldn't find the solution from the, the manual but if anyone of you have any idea how where to find a, an English version of the this manual or something else uh, please tell me and uh, I saw that people are looking for that in a B a EAB, uh, the English Amiga board as well. So please tell me because I'm uh, really interested to learn uh, this uh, uh, program a little uh, more. So uh, what I found is that if you click with the right mouse button over this icon, it looks exactly the same, right? You get exactly the same uh, options like if you click with the left which is a little bit confusing if you are not familiar but if you go with the right click button on ray tracing for example you get the ray tracing uh, window just fine and you can make changes based on that so if you click screen mode edit or screen and then you say okay uh, resolution let's say 1024 to 768 this picture uh, from the picture sequence from here if you have an animation you can set from which frame to which frame you want to render um, I'm not expert with Cinema 4D I only use it for a, a few days a couple of days so I'm not expert with that uh, I mostly played a, a little bit with the um, with the demos that uh, come uh, with the demo scenes that come with the application so uh, aspect ratio okay and if you click render you see that it starts rendering which is quite uh, successful right so we have a 10 24 uh, image of this uh, scene okay and uh, yeah it, it seems to, uh, to work pretty well uh, you have different views from this side this uh, button P is the, the view that you have with your uh, camera and if you want you can move it for example like that and the right mouse button is a little bit it reminds you the the user interface it reminds me the blender which the right mouse button does something else in the scene uh, and the left button does something else and you can move it for example like that and if you click here is the rotate okay like that and if you click again on ray tracing it remembers right now the uh, configuration that I did a little bit earlier so it renders with that uh, configuration uh, PPC 603 says yeah it, it, and it is really fast yeah uh, of course if you check up here at the CPU let me render again it goes up to uh, almost 100, 100. Uh, I would like to remind you here that it uses the Petunia uh, emulation that comes with Amiga OS 4 uh, because this application is based uh, it's a 68k uh, application right uh, I think it uses the floating point I'm not sure yet <laughs> it might not use uh, floating point but I think it does and um, yeah it's uh, quite fast and um, the 
user interface is quite in intuitive. I mean, I used uh, Lightwave as well, but I feel that with the the Cinema 4D, it's um, easier to understand what you are doing and uh, how to do things without even read a manual. Uh, but I, I, I might be wrong. Okay, and you have here these uh, four ways for windows to see the different angles of the um, items and you can have here the zoom in zoom out if you want uh, of the image or if you want to have the whole scene in one uh, window like that and uh, also uh, as you have seen here we have a background of the sky uh, Cinema 4D has a, an interesting um, concept as much as I understand you have a two um, items which is one is the floor and the other is the sky the sky, I think that's the same thing that happens with uh, Lightwave as well I'm not expert with 3D, so I might uh, say stupid things, but uh, bear with me. So the, the sky is a globe that um, is outside of all the items that you are working on. Uh, PPC603 says the same render takes hours on uh, 4040. I would uh, like to, to hear how it works with uh, PyStorm, to be honest. So, if you want to see the sky, for example, you have to go um, object selection. Let me go to, to sky, select the sky. Okay. As you can see here, you have a, a window where you have all the items the camera, the light, the sky. And also, you can add uh, items if you want. And here, you have all the items that you created, for example, the dice. It has many different objects, so you can group them and when you move the dice, all these objects are uh, moving or if you apply a, 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 a material or something into the dice, it, gets, it asks you to, to apply this material to the other uh, object as well. I'm not going to go too deep in with that, but I would like to show you something else. Uh, so if we select sky okay and here we select this let me move the help uh, select this button here and we have where is it no this one you see that this is the sky that we are using and uh, this is a globe outside uh, our uh, items okay so i would like to since we have the sky selected i would like to do the let me go here material manager okay so you see all these items uh, at black right now because that's that was a, a way to for the, the tool uh, to save some memory on uh, the Amiga uh, that didn't have too much memory it's not like the, the one that uh, I'm using right now and that's the image of the, the sky so I would like to find uh, another image uh, and put uh, there let me open my browser Okay, give it a second, yeah, okay, let me close that, and I will go to uh, duck, duck, go dot com. The reason that I'm going to that search engine is, first of all, the, the privacy that it gives and the second uh, that it has uh, it works much better on the, this browser 
PVC603 says, says, sorry, I missed the start. Is the same version that I used back then? Uh, I checked the for English manual if I have it. Um, this version is uh, 4.2. Uh, if I remember correctly, let me check. Yes, 4.2. It was. It is a version that uh, was come uh, came with the Amiga Future last uh, CD-ROM uh, that was uh, uh, with the last um, uh, the last issue that was uh, released back in uh, 1997, and that's the full program. Uh, it's not a demo. So uh, clouds image. Okay, let me click here images, and I will try to find something in large. You see that this uh, uh, search engine works much better than. Um, I don't know, than uh, Google. So I will try to find something. Let's say this one. Okay. I will click on that. View file. Perfect. Let me download it. It's a, it's a JPEG. And save it in the RAM disk. And if I click here, Material Manager, this one, I can change to run this, this one here. View Program Error. Okay, so it doesn't support this file. Let me try another one. Uh, how about this one? view file okay this doesn't exist anymore I don't want to use a huge one because it's going to take a lot of memory not that we have any any problem but I don't know if there is any limitation with the application find something smaller let's use this one and see if we can create something uh, nice What I want to, to show you is that you can uh, use with uh, Cinema 4D uh, images that you can find on uh, the internet and use them uh, in your uh, scenes. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, if you click view, you can view the, the, the image. Okay, as you can see here right now, it shows this uh, texture just fine because we edited that. And if you go to others, uh, one by one, uh, it shows the exact um, uh, material. Let me do a uh, ray tracing on that. And here it is, but you see that the the globe is not placed right. Okay, let me see what we can do about it. Um, we have the sky selected, and if you do something like I have here the move, but you can also uh, resize it like that you see at the bottom right uh, side 
that it uh, makes the sky bigger and covers the the globe you see the how how easy it is to do things like that and let's do again a rendering it looks better but it is a little bit pixelated right but you see here the the uh, reflection on the dice that's quite uh, well done so if you go here clouds cycle let's see now how it works uh, like that much better just a little bit of uh, like an introduction <laughs> to Cinema 4D I'm not a, an expert on that but you see it works quite well uh, it is very stable on uh, Amiga OS 4 I uh, did uh, a few renderings earlier yes okay let me uh, open something else for example the color text probably you have seen this um, image many times um, in magazines or something like that okay editor and remember we we um, we use a big resolution for this kind of programs and for a 68k uh, program right and the rendering is quite fast uh, Aris Amiga says can we add two images so it's like half from each side uh, what do you mean by that you can add uh, for a sky for example you can add whatever image you want and this is going to work as a, um, a globe above uh, that your items are inside that globe uh, for example if you want to create a, a solar system you can get a solar system image and uh, use that and then uh, you have uh, your items like it's they are in space pretty much what uh, you can do with a uh, light wave as well uh, or uh, in light wave you can uh, actually create items uh, if I recall right uh, that are uh, are in in that globe for example if you want to create uh, stars you create a globe of stars uh, and then you put your items inside that globe of course uh, guys if you want to learn more about the uh, light wave on, uh, Amig on uh, Amiga uh, there is a channel uh, of uh, Moadib uh, on YouTube he is doing uh, a tremendous uh, job with the uh, tutorials and uh, he created more than uh, 40 uh, videos about that and uh, also there is uh, the videos from uh, Holden Modify as well he's creating some uh, he's uh, working on Lightwave a lot and he has some uh, tutorial videos there as well I haven't seen anything about Cinema 4D so uh, if you would like to, to learn more uh, along with me then I would maybe I would uh, create some uh, tutorial uh, videos about uh, Cinema 4D, 4D as um, I am learning on that uh, application how it works I might uh, do some uh, videos uh, on that please tell me if you are interested or something like that um, so uh, yeah that's uh, Cinema 4D as well it works pretty well on uh, Amiga OS 4 uh, I really like it and I'm going to, to experiment a little bit more uh, with that and uh, yeah that's uh, that's what I wanted to, to share with you uh, today in this stream uh, I hope you liked it I hope it, it was useful for you all and um, I would like to thank you all for being here uh, joining me in this uh, stream after so much time and um, remember today I, I uploaded on uh, YouTube uh, a video that I created with uh, renderings on uh, 
on uh, Amica OS 4 uh, X5000 uh, of uh, the benchmark uh, scenes for Lightwave 5. Uh, I'm doing that from the cell and there you can see uh, the timing that it gets uh, for these scenes to be uh, rendered on an X5000 and then um, uh, compare them with other systems if you want. Uh, it was something that uh, you people uh, asked on uh, previous streams when we have seen the light wave how it works on uh, um, on uh, the Amiga OS 4 and uh, I found some time and I created that I hope you like it uh, it's pretty small because <laughs> the X5000 is pretty fast <laughs> but uh, take a look on that uh, thank you Till Grooms for being here uh, I really appreciate that you uh, and all the others uh, join me on these streams because I prefer to, cre to create live streams because of, of having these conversations uh, with you guys and uh, if you have any uh, questions that you would like to uh, discuss on uh, other streams feel free to, to contact me you can find me on uh, forums, on IRC chats and uh, Discord uh, I'm, I'm always everywhere and uh, you can find me also on Twitter, you don't hesitate to, to send me a message there. Uh, before we close, I would like uh, to thank you all for being here. Uh, it's really fun for me uh, to make these uh, streams and uh, also I hope that they are useful for you because otherwise <laughs> I don't... Uh, why to, to, to create them, right? And uh, also I would like to, to thank all my supporters. I have um, a coffee page for... for <laughs> Hello Dedalus, welcome to the stream. You missed it? <laughs> you can see it later. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a page at uh, coffee. It's coffee slash Volcaro where you can uh, support me on uh, what I am doing here. The, the videos that I create, the streams that I'm doing and the uh, development that, that I am doing on open source uh, applications uh, for Amiga OS 3, Amiga OS 4 and uh, Morphos uh, and um, everything is uh, open source for others to have a look on the code and uh, see if they can get uh, inspired or would like to, to contribute uh, on that uh, and also uh, have in mind that uh, at the end of every month 50% 50 50 of the donations are going to other Amiga projects uh, uh, to support other developers and uh, websites and uh, so uh, by donating to me you also uh, support other uh, people that are active in our community uh, thank you Teal Groups for being here, Dedalus for coming late, <laughs> don't worry at all, PPC603 for being here, thank you, JMA80, uh, thank you uh, Ars Amiga, thank you, uh, Muadip3D is on, on the chat, oh, thank you for being here, <laughs> Muadib. Thank you everyone for uh, being here, uh, and you Mahet5, thank you. And uh, also I would like to thank uh, my uh, monthly supporters in uh, my coffee page which is uh, Daniel Gentilica, uh, T. Liverlord and Roman Kargin. Uh, thank you everyone, uh, have a good evening and a great uh, weekend. Bye bye.